A pleasant and lovely good morning to you one and all. This is Joe of All Vapes coming at you from a cold and chilly Wednesday morning. It's about 7 a.m. and I think I'm seeing my breath on this one. But, got my coffee, got my vape, and I've got today's review going on for you. So, Ranger Mods is what we're talking about. This is coming from RAF Mods. Go on to Instagram and check out RAF Mods, R-A-F-F. -F. Mike and Melanie Rafferty are the ones behind this little brainchild here. This is an awesome, awesome regulated little box mod. Part of the March Mod Madness campaign that I got going on right now. If you saw my last review for Nimbus Mods LLC, if you haven't, shame on you. You should definitely go back to my video section and check that out. It's a pretty good review. This one is going to be just a little bit different. Now, first of all, before I start getting into the nitty-gritty of this awesome little box mod, I want to talk about the content of the video. Um, Information-wise, some people have said they didn't really want to get into the nerd info like I do. You know, I like to get into the nitty-gritty and, and just in-depth and what goes into these boxes, what makes them tick, and so on and so forth, the build, yada, yada, yada. Not a lot of you guys like to know all that stuff, so I'll try and kind of keep it as pithy but straight and to the point as possible but I will be pointing out some of the technical advantages compared to a base unregulated model, which is the last one that I did. So, first of all, this is what's called a Ranger mod, obviously. You guys saw that, but the chipset is called an OKRT-10. Now, compared to the last one that I did, just the base model unregulated, there's a lot of differences between those two. The base model unregulated gets anywhere between about 180 to 200 watt output. When it comes to an OKR T10, this guy out, uh, outputs about 80 watts of solid power, and uh, we're talking about an adjustable with a potentiometer voltage of anywhere between 3.4 to 6 volts. So what does that mean? Anything within 0 to 80 watts that you have um, with whatever resistance coil that you're using, you're pretty much safe to use on this bad boy. Now, this is extremely hard hitting. The cool thing is, is that it's very manageable. It's lighter than your typical uh, 1590 Hammond box. It's actually called a 1590G. And I know specifically that the 1590Gs are just smaller in dimensions. The last one that I was using was taller and wider, which is perfectly cool. That's one of my go-to boxes, but this one is really, really awesome. It's a little bit more, more ergonomic because it's smaller. And, um, you know, the cool thing about this is no Hammond lean. If any of you are not familiar with the Hammond lean, Hammond Manufacturing is typically where about 95% of the box modders get these little boxes, um, no matter what you know what the, the dimensions are. And they typically come with, uh, yeah, after their CNC mill, they typically come with kind of uneven edges. So when you sit them down on a flat surface, they'll tip over just slightly. So typically what we're doing is we're taking a sanding block and sanding down the sides and around all the edges and whatnot, polishing it off, and sometimes we've got to do it again. These don't come with that Hammond lean. They're perfectly CNC milled. And like I said, with the smaller size, you can stick it in your pocket, you know, you can throw it in your backpack, you know, what have you. And it, it's, just a, it's just a little bit more convenient. It's, um, you know, it, it really is kind of a neat little size. So let's, uh, let's just pretend you don't know what goes into these things. Let's pretend you don't know anything about these things. It would make me feel better when I come to discussing them. So first of all, you've got the potentiometer on the side, otherwise known as the pot. The potentiometer is what is going to be your manual adjustment to this device. As you can see, it goes from zero, that's well, a little fuzzy in the camera, but it goes from zero on this point all the way around to 100. The point of zero is the lowest voltage output. The point of 100 is the highest. So all the way up to six, depending on the charge of your batteries, of course, if they're you know real high, you're gonna get the majority of that, um, you know, especially with a low battery drain. So we're gonna take the lid off. Cool little, uh, cool little design. Case in point, you can get this personally customized, engraved to whatever you want. I mean, basically within reason. You can keep it too crazy. You can talk to the guys over at Wrath Mods over that one. But I've got my signature Joe Ball Vapes logo going on. Very slick. I do like how the little magnets here are exposed on the outside. So you can see them on the inside. But I like how they're exposed on the outside. And that's a feature that you can kind of play around with to your liking. I mean... You know, a lot of DIY box modders want to get into all kinds of different, um, you know, expressions and, and builds with their boxes. But you know what? I just assume leave it to the experts, like the guys at RAF Mods, especially if I don't know what I'm doing. So, first of all, we're going to look at the features of this guy. Now, you look in the interior. Look how clean that is. I mean, everything is really, really clean. What don't you see? 
no wires hanging out, no adhesive hanging out, no tape, no glue, you know, no blobs of caulking or anything like that, no fingerprints like stuck to paint or something like that kind of goofy stuff that sometimes we see on certain products that we buy off the internet or something like that. You know, this is quality, very, very high quality. Shows how long they've been doing this. Obviously, they've done all the research. You know, they've, uh, they've gotten the best uh, high quality parts and equipment to make these and put these things together. So, first of all, we're gonna look at the toggle on off switch. This is something that I think is a really cool additive to this. When I first started looking into box mods, I saw DIY this and DIY that, and there's basically just, you know, your, your base unregulated model you're, you're basically wiring everything together and you're keeping everything pretty solidified. But you know what? I'm kind of a stickler for little teeny features like that. You know, I love the little teeny stuff. So the one cool thing, like I said, is the manual on off toggle switch. And they're small enough that I can just, you know, switch them with my finger. And the cool thing is, is that they're completely flush with the rest of the box. So you can put the lid back on and no gaps, nothing is pressing upwards, you know, it's, um, it's done really, really well. And there is tons and tons of different kind of uh, toggle devices that you can get for these boxes online. You can get big ones, fat ones, round ones, square ones, you know, all kinds of stuff. So not only did they have one that was small enough to fit flush with the box, but as you can see, the outside enclosure around the battery sled is built with the little fit holes for those switches, which I think is really, really cool. I mean, you know, they might have gotten this custom made, I don't know, but the fact that it's there makes it look like I just, you know, bought this from some very high-end, you know, mod manufacturer, which is really, really cool. I really like that additive. So we're going to switch this guy on, and here's the other cool part. Right above the toggle on off switch is this switch right here. Now you switch it all the way to the bottom, and what that's going to show you is the battery output when the fire button is pressed. So we're going to go ahead and press that now. Okay, we're reading about 7.28 on this one, which tells me that my batteries are just a little bit drained. Typically, they would go up to about 8, sometimes, you know, maybe 8.4, especially on a series build, which is pretty much uh, typical for an OKR T10 build. If you take this little battery output button and press it up, you're going to get the voltage output that goes into the coil. So that's going to give you an indication um, of uh, what, according to how you adjust the potentiometer, how many volts is either going into the aftermarket coil that you buy or the homemade coil that you build. So we're going to take a look at this now. I'm reading about 3.84, as you can see. Now, that's on its lowest setting, close to lowest, a little bit lower to the zero. So that's going to be more towards the 3.4. Very, very briefly, I'm going to bust this all the way up to the 100 mark and I'm gonna show you how the voltage changes. And you can hear it fire. So 5.64, that's considerably different than about 3.6, 3.7 or something. So that shows you the, the, the absolute difference between the amount of voltage that you're allowing to go into your coil is definitely gonna up the coil output. So the cool thing is, you know, for all those people that are new to this kind of thing, this is going to be a really interesting way to learn how to, you know, play around with these things. It's going to help you out with Ohm's Law because you're going to be more prone to wanting to go back and, you know, just playing around with it and stuff like that, especially since this is a regulated voltage device. Now, I think a lot of us have been spoiled with DNA models and stuff like that with the digital readouts where you can, you know, see what the uh, what the ohm resistance is of your, whatever coil that you're using. You can adjust the wattage, adjust the voltage. Some of them are temperature controlled, you know, all that cool stuff. This, all you can adjust is the voltage. Now, if you deal with Ohm's Law and, and you know how to work it, and by the way, I will be putting another link to an Ohm's Law calculator, a really easy one, in the description below. Basically, it has four fields. If you put in two variables from either one of into either one of those four fields like say you already know that if I bust this down to zero let's just say for argument's sake that's going to be 3.4 volts of output you know depending on you know the, the battery charge and all so I'm going to put that into the voltage field and let's say that I know the resistance on my Vengeance some ohm take here is 0.2 which it is so I'm going to put a 0.2 resistance in the ohm field what that's going to do is you're going to hit calculate on that calculator and it's going to give you the other two variables. It's going to give you the amps and then it's going to give you the wattage, which is the power. So that way you'll be able to fairly to some degree be able to tell 
where according to the voltage output on the potentiometer that you change to whatever your liking is, is what the output wattage is going to be. But of course, you already know that the cap off for that is going to be 80 watts because that's what this bad boy produces. So the more you get into this, you know, and, and I, it does get a little bit easier. The, you know, the easier it's going to be from that point on, you're going to be able to play with it to your own discretion. And I mean, you're going to have a ton of fun with this. Now, I do appreciate that everything is encased within the box itself. You know, the, the voltmeter, a, a lot of people like the fact that, you know, the voltmeter is either right below the potentiometer or right by the button, or sometimes I've seen them on the face plate. You know, to be perfectly honest with you, I really dig the fact that everything is encased right here because number one, here's where I'm putting my batteries. When I put my batteries in here, if I'm taking the switch and I'm putting it down to the output volt display, then all I gotta do is press the button real quick and I'm seeing what I got available here. So that tells me, especially with a series build, because these ones will need to be charged a little bit more often, it'll give me the opportunity to see where exactly my battery charge is at. And if you don't wanna fire your coil while doing that, just unscrew the darn thing. And then of course you can keep depressing the button and it will still give you the readings other than when you switch the button up, you're not gonna be able to obviously see what the voltage output into the coil is because you're not gonna have the coil attached. But, so there are those cool little features. And with the fact that all of those are encased, the buttons and the voltmeter on the inside of the box where the lid affixes, I'm gonna know that if I stick this in my pocket, if I stick it in my backpack, which is already full of vape stuff as it is, you know, if I stick it in my glove compartment while I'm driving or, you know, on the seat of my car or something like that, none of that stuff is gonna get dented, scratched, um, you know, just smacked around or broken or anything like this. Also, the cool thing is the box, I mean, this is a really hard box. I wouldn't do this to anybody else's box, but luckily I've never dropped this thing. Um, you know, it, it really is. It's an incredibly sturdy box. I mean, this, it's solid aluminum milled. Um, you're, you're not gonna break this, you're not gonna bend it. The cool thing is too, on top of that, is that the powder coating comes in an array of colors. You can pretty much get this to your, your pleasure if you go on to Raf Mods on Instagram you're gonna have the opportunity to choose from a different array of colors. And I happen to like the green. The green was pretty cool for me. It was kind of an earthy color and it has a very tactile feeling to it. It's almost kind of like that tough coat that you spray in the back of the, you know, your truck to make sure that nothing slips around in here. It's a very slip resistant coating, but it's powder coated. So you can get it in an array of colors, basically whatever it is that they offer on their website. You follow the link in their bio and it'll take you directly to their sales website and you can choose you know, different little options here and there. I like the green LED. That's really cool. And on the voltmeter, it's the exact same thing. You get a little green action going on there. They have blue, they have red, they have white, they have green. And then of course, they've got the different color options. Now, these bad boys retail for about 150 bucks, which in my opinion is an incredible deal. I mean, for the amount of craftsmanship that we've already discussed that goes into these things, you know, we're gonna, we're gonna just kind of go over everything a little bit uh, briefly right before I end the review here, um, I, I can guarantee you, you're definitely gonna be putting your money into a quality product here. This is not a couple of guys that you know are in the middle of their finals week or something like that, got a spare room and, and you know some frat house somewhere and you know loaded with pizza boxes and they're throwing batteries and cords in a bunch of boxes that they find behind uh, you know some building or something like that. I can guarantee, you, I don't know what scenario you would find with that, but I can guarantee you, you're not finding that with these guys. They're a husband and wife team two of the most awesome people I've ever met, lucky enough to call them my friends, uh, and, and I can guarantee you, they know everything there is about quality made box mods. They've been doing it for quite some time, and it shows by the serial number on my box is number 565, and I know that they've gone beyond that by, at this time. I haven't had this this long, too, so it's a really, really awesome box. The one thing I will say about this is the cool thing is they made sure to make this thing perfectly safe for me and perfectly safe for you with the reverse polarity protection. And what this is, is there's a chip inside this box that takes care of the reverse polarity protection, which basically states that if there's a neutral wire, basically the ground wire, and there's another wire called the hot wire, what happens is when you plug something into the wall socket, um, what happens is the hot wire makes the connection to the ground wire, which sends the electricity through whatever device that you're sending into. That is the bridge right there, whatever that little plug is, whatever the device is. Now, in certain circumstances, if something has shoddy wiring, or if something kind of crazy goes on, or you know, say your, your batteries are kind of messed up, or you 
you, you know, you, who knows, who knows? There's plenty of ways to screw up electronic devices, you know what I mean? The point is, if for whatever reason the hot wire tends to get loose on a device like this or some kind of screw up or something like that, and we close the bridge, in other words, we become the device that bridges from the hot to the ground, that's going to be an unpleasant experience. So the cool thing is about RAF mods is that they have a reverse polarity protection that makes sure that in the worst case scenario, if something like that happens, which I doubt it's ever going to happen with something this high quality, the chip within this box is immediately going to sever the bridge. Now, you might have a little bit of internal damage depending on what the situation may be that's going to cause that in the first place would have to be something kind of crazy. And with craftsmanship this good, you're probably never going to experience that from the get-go. But they wanted to cover all the bases and make sure that whatever you're buying from them is going to be a top-notch, high-quality product. And that's exactly what this is. So here's the deal. Number one, when you buy these guys, you're going to get this cool little laminated card, which is going to tell you just kind of the base details of when you bust off the lid on this guy. This is what you're going to see. Flip it around, and you're going to get the nitty-gritty, the nerdy nitty-gritty, which I like to call it, because this is my language right here. And I know Melanie will understand. She's probably the one who wrote it. But uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take all this information. I'm going to put it in the description below, so you'll have the opportunity to get just a little bit more in-depth into this stuff. Now, if any of you guys have any questions and just want to get a little bit more deeper into this box than I have already gotten, um, I'll answer whatever questions you have. Of course, I will divert you to... Uh, Melanie Rafferty of RAF Mods, and she will answer your questions so much more expertly and much better looking than me as, as well, I might add. But I digress once again. Um, I really hope that I've covered all the bases with you guys on this awesome, awesome box mod. For some reason, it just feels like I'm not saying enough about these guys. I'm incredibly happy with this mod. It is one of the best I've ever used. I'm going to get so much use out of this guy, and uh, you know, I'm, I'm just really, really super happy to have an awesome product as well as this. So definitely go into RAF Mods on Instagram, check these guys out, follow the link in their bio, check out their awesome mo uh, mods that they have available, vape and be happy. Typically on these mornings, I don't ramble off as much as I usually do. My brain is a little bit dead. Thank God I've got a good vape and a good cup of coffee. But if you like these reviews all the same, Please tell your vape fam at Joe of All Vapes here on YouTube and spread the word. Check out my Instagram page, Joe of All Vapes underscore two. I just finished doing an awesome giveaway. I've got an even better one coming up for the month of April. And this one is going to be a doozy. I'm talking about solid, solid stuff. And I'll give you a hint, just a little hint. It's juice and it's fit for a king. Okay, let your brain ponder on that one for a little while. But look. It's a beautiful, beautiful Wednesday morning. I want everybody to have a wonderful day. Love yourselves, love each other, and above all else, in the middle of spring, keep it dry, but keep it cloudy.